seated. May I at this time call on our brother, the Arach Reverend Innocent Odu, for the devotion. Good morning, everybody. Your Grace the Primate, I greet you. Mama Nigeria, I greet you in Jesus' name. I welcome you to this morning devotion. I'd like us to begin with the singing of the hymn on page 55. We have heard the joyful sound. We take the first stanza, the third, and the last. One, three, four. We have heard the joyful sound. Please, let's stand to sing. Father in heaven, we thank you again for the privilege of a new day, for this gathering amidst all the fears, amidst all the tension in the air. Thank you for bringing us together, for granting us quality sleep and rest last night, and for our gathering this morning, we thank you. We pray, Lord, that you minister to us this morning through your word, with your spirit present to guide and to instruct us. Let the words we receive edify us, enrich us, bless us, and equip us sufficiently to take our position as victorious children of the Most High. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may please take your seats. We take our reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Read from verse 28. Romans 8, from verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also predestinates to be conformed to the image of his son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. From the passage we read this morning, we draw a number of lessons. Firstly, there are what we identify as the divine purposes of God, which are unfailing. No matter how much the devil and circumstances around us try to thwart or reverse those foreordained purposes of God for our lives. They remain unfailing. In other words, whatever God has decreed cannot be tampered with, cannot be touched, cannot be trampled down. And as we gather in this conference, my prayer for all of us is that everything God has proposed for you for me, for our families, and for the church, nothing shall be able to bring it down in Jesus' name. In verse 31 of our text, we also draw a second lesson, and that is that in God and with God on our side, we are safe, we are secure. Again, it does not matter who or what rises against us. The psalmist affirms this in Psalm 118, verse 6, where it said, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. With this assurance, of the divine presence and security, we go about life confident. Christians are confident people. Some may see us as weak, as perhaps timid, but the truth is that we are bold, we are courageous, we are confident. And we move about with our heads held high, we do so because of God. 
We do so because we realize that God is on our side. He is in us. He is with us. We have nothing to be afraid of. The world may be shaking. The world may be threatening us. But the truth remains that we are confident. We are bold and courageous people. We know where we are coming from. We know where we are going to. We know the one with whom we are relating. So in Psalm, in Psalm 3, again the psalmist has this to say. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be, we say of my soul, there is no hope for him in God. That's the way people think about Christians. People who are abandoned, whose God cannot rise to fight for them. But they are not sufficiently educated in the school of the scriptures. Otherwise, nobody will feel that way about a child of God. Verse 3 says, But thou, o Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. That is our testimony and that is the basis of our confidence and courage as we face the issues of life. So we are safe and secure. That is the second lesson. From verse 32 to verse 39, we draw the lesson of God's wonderful love for mankind and particularly for those that are his. This love moves him into diverse positive actions for his people. It is this cord of love that moved him to deliver with a mighty hand the children of Israel, his own people, out of Pharaoh's house of bondage in Egypt. Deuteronomy 7 verse 8. That same love moved him to offer the, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for the salvation of all mankind. It was a sacrifice of the just for the unjust. We sinned, but Jesus was offered as the atoning sacrifice. By Jesus' sacrificial death, God demonstrated his love for mankind. As Paul shows us in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God also revealed through the death of Jesus the riches of his grace and mercy for all of us. By it, all who believe in this sacrificial death and in the person of Jesus have become God's sons and daughters. So if you are here this morning, you have given your life to Jesus, you are a child of God. Even when Satan tries to tell you that you are not, your faith in the Lord Jesus has made you God's own son, God's own daughter. And that's exactly who you are. Even though before now we are not reckoned with, but our faith in Jesus has brought us close to God. We have become his elect children. And now, as we read in the passage here, God has given us all things freely, freely in Christ. We are free from condemnation. Romans 8 verse 1. With this understanding of our position in Christ, Paul asks the question in verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? He said, Christ died for our sins, 
he was buried, he rose from the dead, and ascended back to heaven and took his place at God's right hand. He's not just sitting idle there and enjoying worship. He's sitting there making intercession, pleading for us, and also defending us. Whenever the accuser of the brethren, the devil himself, raises any accusation against us. So we are highly privileged people. We are defended. We are protected. We are shielded. Jesus' death has brought us into oneness with God and oneness with Jesus himself. So we are a people who enjoy what I call an inseparable relationship with the blessed trinity such that no tribulation, no distress, no persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword, and or any kind of adverse experience is capable of setting us apart from God. We are glued to God. We are united with God. We are one with God. God has engraven us in the palms of his hands. And there is no power that is able to pull us from there. That is not to say that we are denying the existence of adversities or life's challenges. They are there. And every day we are facing them. Every day we are contending with them. Every day we are doing battle with them. They exist in, form, in the form of evil influences of men trying to rule over our lives and control us and bend us to do the will of the devil. They exist in the form of malign spiritual forces, severest afflictions and diseases. All these come against us and after us. Presently, the global community is contending with a virus, an unseen virus, which nobody is prepared to own up as being the originator of it. Some say it's from one country, others say it's, no, it's from your country. But the problem, the truth there is that the whole world is in pain. I'm referring to COVID-19, the coronavirus. Part of the weapons of the evil one against us and several other diseases, cancer, you name it, hypertension, diabetes, all forms of severe afflictions. The world is going through, even we in the church are not left out. We are experiencing them. Worldly allurements and satanic powers, all of them are on rampage. These are all there and will continue to be there with Satan, our powerful and cunning opponent, devising them, manufacturing them, and sending them to the world. However, we have this assurance, this audacious faith and confidence I talked about, of course, drawing inspiration from Apostle Paul. What he calls his persuasion. This persuasion, as Paul put it in verse 38, for I'm persuaded that none of these things is able to take us away from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. He said that because of God's foreordained and God's unfailing purposes for our lives because of his promise of security for us, his wonderful love for us as demonstrated in the sacrifice of Jesus. And now, our inseparable union with him. Apostle Paul uses the superlative phrase to describe the nature of our victory and triumph over the things I have mentioned and many more. He says about us that we are more than conquerors. 
In other words, Paul is snubbing whatever is happening. Let them continue to rage. Let them continue to exist. We have overcome them already. Paul is saying, Satan is a defeated foe. Even though he comes raging at us, he has already been defeated. His forces have been crushed. We are victorious. We may not have physically gone out for war. Jesus takes the battle for us. And at the end of every battle, he issues his children a certificate of victory. That's why we don't need to fight in this battle like God told Moses to tell the children of Israel who were at the verge of the Red Sea. So you don't need to fight in this battle. It's not your own. The battle of life belongs to God. He fights them for us. And at every victory over those problems, he issues you a certificate as if you were the one who wrote the exam. Praise the Lord. That is who we are. Paul is saying that we are more than victorious. So ours is what we may call victory plus. Some people score in an exam A, but others score what we call A1. And sometimes I begin to wonder what's the difference. It just to emphasize the fact that yes, others may have scored A, but your own A is with a uh, extra distinction. Praise the Lord. It's an exceptional A. So we are victorious. Some persons in the world may be victorious, but Christians are more victorious because we have the one who is fighting for us. Because of Jesus and his power at work within us, we are able to handle troubles, challenges, trials, persecutions, temptations, head on. We may be threatened, but we are not shaking. Everybody say, no shaking. Somebody tell the other person, no shaking. No shaking. The power of Christ in us gives us the extra resilience of endurance. That extra inner strength which helps us and keeps us from falling even when everything around us is breaking up, we remain strong. Like somebody, a politician said, no shaking, I did campe, I did gidiba. That is a testimony of a typical child of God who knows his place in Christ, who faithfully lives and serves the Lord. By God's grace, we continue to emerge victorious no matter what the devil and the world bring our way. By God's grace, you are victorious. By God's grace, you are victorious. By God's grace, we are victorious. We are more than conquerors. Satan, our adversary, is already defeated. He is acting like a typical serpent. When you kill a serpent, does it die immediately? It keeps wriggling. It keeps wriggling. Giving the impression that he's alive. But the truth is that the serpent is gone. That is what the devil is pretending to be doing before us. But the concluding question this morning is, is this true about you? You who are here this morning for DeepCon, is it true that you are courageous, you are confident, you are bold? Is it true that you are more than a conqueror? You are victorious? Is it true that you are truly one with Christ and in union with him? Is it true that your faith in him is unshaken and nothing is also shaking you? Faith in Jesus and relationship with him will usher us into this victorious life. In Christ Jesus, this can become our testimony. I pray that we'll rise from this conference with the testimony of a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me conclude by reading Psalm 44 verse, from verse 5. Psalm 44. Through thee, 
we will push down our enemies. Through thy name, we will tread down under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. Verse 8 says, In God we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. Is this true about you? Do you have God? If you are confident ever in life about anything, is it about your relationship with God and who God is and what he's doing for you? Or you are just going about empty? In God we boast. And because God is within us and around us, and for us, nothing can stand against us and prevail. That is our testimony. That is our joy. That's our song. That's why I took that hymn this morning. We have heard the joyful sound. What is that joyful sound? That we are victorious. What is that joyful sound? That we are more than conquerors through the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. May God continue to equip us and strengthen us in our faith and work with him in the name of Jesus. I want us to rise on our feet. Let's pray. Let's thank God for making us what we are and who we are. Let's appreciate God this morning for the privilege of being his own, his own people, very special people for whom he can go to any land to defend, to protect, to provide for, to fight for. Thank God for who you are. Tell the Lord I appreciate this, you this morning for this understanding that I'm special to you and you will go to any length to preserve me from the rage of the adversary. Let's bless the name of the Lord for this conference. Let's pray for this conference that here in this place of meeting, the Lord will visit us, not in a small way, but in a mighty way. We'll rise from this conference stronger, better equipped, prepared to face the issues of life headlong, knowing the provisions God has made for us. Pray for yourself, declare, and tell the devil this morning, no matter what you are doing, I will overrun you already. You're under my feet. Your forces are under my feet. I'm victorious. I'm God's child. And you and all your devices are not capable of separating me from the love of God. I am secure. Make that confession this morning. Make it this morning. Let's pray for the rest of the day and ask that the Lord will guide us by his spirit here. Let's pray that the proceedings of the day will indeed be guided by God's governance. Nothing will be done here in the flesh. God will be glorified. At the end of today, we shall have cause to thank him for bringing us together. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory for your word. We thank you for our position in you. Through Christ, made possible by his love for us and through his death. Thank you for giving us victory over our adversary, the devil himself and his host of demons and circumstances. Thank you for our union with you that cannot be threatened by anything. Blessed be your name. We pray for ourselves that our faith in you will continue to grow and be strengthened day by day. As we face the proceedings of this conference today, Lord, we yield to you. We yield all our speakers to you. We yield ourselves to you. We pray that you be present and that all we do will glorify you. May we be refreshed. Those who come here with sickness, may they be healed. Those who come here with one trouble or the other, 
Father, may there be a great lifting for them above whatever the troubles are. This is a day of victory. We declare it to the glory of your name and to the joy of our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus this morning. Thank you.